Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for uh, joining us here today. My name is uh, Dan Hurley. I'm the Executive Director of University Relations here at uh, Vancouver Island University. And it's my pleasure to welcome you here to uh, VIU's Malaspina Theatre. Be before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we're on the traditional territory of the Sinemoc First Nation, with whom we have a integral, mutual, and productive relationship in education and community engagement. Um, before we begin, I'd like to welcome a number of our, our key guests, uh, notably, of course, our two key speakers today for today's announcement, uh, Dr. Rosin Koonin, number one, President of Rosin Koonin and Associates, and the President Vice Chancellor of Vancouver Island University, Dr. Ralph Nielsen. We'll hear, thank you, yes. We'll hear from them in just, in just a moment. I'm also pleased to acknowledge the presence today of a number of important dignitaries, and I, I hope I've got most of you, but it's a little dark from up here, so if I miss anybody, uh, especially elected officials, please just let me know. Um, I'd like to, first of all, from the BC Legislative Assembly, see Mr. Leonard Krogh, MLA for Nanaimo. Um, I'm not sure if uh, His Worship John Rattan is here yet, uh, but I do expect that he will, will be here with us shortly from the city of Nanaimo. We also have uh, Mr. Mike Brown, who's past chair of the VIU Board of Governors. Mr. Mike Walker, who is the chair of the uh, VIU Foundation. We also have Mr. Bill Yoakum, who is a member of the VIU Board of Governors and also a counselor with the Sinemoc First Nation. We also have a number of uh, members of the VIU uh, administration here. We have uh, Vice President uh, Academic and Provost, uh, Dr. David Witte, Vice President Finance and Administration, uh, Pat Egar, as well as I see the uh, ca new campus administrator for Cowichan Campus, Mr. Warren Weir is here as, as well. And there's a number of you, of course, many faculty, staff, and students. Notably, I also want to acknowledge uh, members of the Vancouver Island University Student Union, uh, in particular Kirsten Brooker and Michael Olson. Also members of uh, the various uh, collective bargaining units here at the, at the Vancouver Island University, as well as the many faculty and staff. So thank you very much for joining us all here today for this important announcement. We're here today to release VIU's first economic impact study. During the past year, VIU has worked closely with an independent consulting firm to produce this most important report. That firm, Rosin Koonin and Associates, was selected following a competitive process last fall. Now that report is ready to share with you. There are some limited paper copies uh, that are available if you're interested in them today, but it is available now at this moment on the website at www.viu.ca backslash impact. So it is there now uh, for you to review and uh, to analyze. Before we get into the details of the report, we want to hear from a number of individuals who were asked to participate in this study and who also agreed to make some comments on camera for us about VIU's impact in our community and region. We're going to start with two video clips to begin. The first is from Paris Godet, Executive Director of Innovation Island, and Paris is here with us today. And following her is His Worship uh, Mayor John Rattan of the City of Nanaimo. So if we're ready for those videos, we'll have them now. My name is Paris Godet. I'm the Executive Director of Innovation Island Technology Association based in Nanaimo. And when I was posed with the question about Vancouver Island University and its impact on our region, uh, so many thoughts came to mind. But three key streams really resonated with technology entrepreneurship. And that's creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurial development. Vancouver Island University is an amazing seed for talent. And working within the tech community, that's really important. Breeding those entrepreneurs, providing them with the opportunities to not only innovate and spin out some incredible companies, but also connect with their entrepreneurial community. We know the knowledge-based industry is a key economic driver, and Vancouver Island University is really the cornerstone and the catalyst for that foundation to happen in our community. It's interesting because I always look at Vancouver Island University as a significant asset. So they're sitting there with some amazing, not only physical infrastructure assets, but also resource assets. So whether that's research and development, an opportunity for faculty to connect with students, to create some amazing research, 
um, that supports the technology community, credible asset with regards to that, um, as well as space. I mean, the, the biggest attribute that Vancouver Island University can offer the technology community is space, whether that's space for events, space for meetups, space for students to connect with entrepreneurs and researchers in an environment that uh, is based on entrepreneurship development and innovation. I'm Mayor John Rattan with the City of Nanaimo. One of the employers in Nanaimo that is huge to the city and huge to industry is the Vancouver Island University VIU. So many programs are designed to fit the employers within our city, the plans that uh, students need for secondary education, and most importantly, the business fit that's so critical to us. Here we have a very, very unique structure, a huge economic generator for our community with some 17,000 full-time and part-time students and a staff of around 2,200. This is one of the major employers of our area and the programs they have interface with a lot of the opportunities here in Nanaimo. One of the advantages um, that uh, Vancouver Island University offers us is the opportunity to change from our traditional resource base now into a knowledge-based industry. And the timing is critical and the transition is in, in progress right now. Also, I think we need to remember that um, the students, uh, and there are 1,600 foreign students alone attending VIU, bring a unique flavor to our community. They bring their culture, their traditions, um, their styles, and this all adds to the mix that's so important for us here in Nanaimo. They also um, require lodging. They, they eat meals, they buy food, they buy clothing. This is a major industry within itself for Nanaimo. They have training programs available um, for heavy equipment, for drivers, um, so that there is really training opportunities for everyone in our community. And this is so important as we move ahead. A lot of our tra traditional jobs in mills and in the forestry and in fishing and mining are slowly coming back, particularly in, in lumber and logging. And trained people are so much in demand as we move ahead VIU can produce quality people that can fill those needs and we're really appreciative of all that they can do for us. So thank you to Paris Goudet and to Mayor Rattan for your, your kind comments and your important comments about uh, our university's impact in the community. And we'll be hearing a couple more videos through the event. But at this time, it is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Rosalind Koonin. Dr. Koonin is principal of Rosalind Koonin and Associates, a consortia of professional analysts and consultants that specialize in economics, business, and human resource consulting. Dr. Koonin has previously served as executive director of the Laurier Institution, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that studies the social and economic impact of cultural diversity in Canada. She has also worked in the private and public sectors and has taught at a number of universities, including Simon Fraser and the University of British Columbia. She served for 20 years as the federal government's regional economist in British Columbia and the Yukon. Dr. Coonan is also a senior fellow with the Canada West Foundation, a past director of the Business Development Bank of Canada, and a former member of the National Statistics Council. She's also served the community in a variety of positions, including chair of WorkSafe BC, chair of the Vancouver Stock Exchange, governor of UBC, Chair of the Vancouver Crisis Centre and Vice President of the YWCA. Dr. Kuhn is also a member of the Order of Canada and a recipient of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal. With that, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Kuhn to the stage to present her presentation. morning. You know one thing for sure when your introduction gets that long. You're getting old. <laughs> and I do have to remind you that I am standing up. <laughs> okay, it was our pleasure and honor to do this study on behalf of VIU. I am not going to tell you what it says. You have to wait to hear from the president for that. So I'm not going to tell you the what 
I'm just going to tell you the how we did it and give you just an overview of that. All the details of methodology and so on are in the report itself available on the website. That worked very well. Okay, so I'm going to look at the processes, the estimation, how we did it, and give you an overview of the methodology. Okay, there's two kinds of research. There's secondary research where you take the information that is available. This is the kind where you would analyze statistics or dig stuff up on the net or so on or look at previous published sources. So we did some of that. And you've all heard the old joke about consultants. A consultant is someone who borrows your watch and tells you what time it is. Okay, here is the watch that we borrowed from VIU. Basically, we started with the information from the university itself to get a handle on a measure of its impact. We looked at financial statements, particularly expenditures. Uh, we looked at planning and regional strategies to get an idea of the extent of the activities. The action plan, we looked at annual reports for their, uh, their quantitative information, major capital projects, and of course the crucial number for an educational institution, student enrollment. Whoops. Okay, then we got into primary research where you get something that isn't written down yet and go directly to the source for an addition to knowledge, as any of you who are thinking of graduate degrees know. And for this we did 65, some of them very, very recent, structured or semi-structured interviews where we went to people who would have knowledge, who would have views, uh, the kind of people you just saw in the video, and asked them to get a handle on the qualitative impact. Because I'm an economist, I think almost everything can be measured in dollars and cents, but sometimes to get a picture of things you need to go beyond the dollars and cents and look at the qualitative side. Okay, uh, who did we talk to? Almost everybody. We got representatives from governments at different levels, the cities, the RD, the school district, and so on. Uh, we spoke to people from the First Nations, and uh, we looked at industry associations and business improvement associations, and we thank all these people from all of these for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, unions, housing and nonprofit agencies, and of course, faculty and staff at the university itself. Okay, uh, to get an impact of the quantitative impact, uh, total impacts have three basic components. There's the first direct impact. You do something and it has an immediate impact. You spend some money to take an example. Then there's the indirect impact. So if the first impact is paying salaries to people at VIU, the indirect impact happens when all these good people go out and spend their salaries. And then the induced impact, and this gets a little bit fuzzier, is when the grocery store that receives the money from the faculty and so on contributes, spends it on in the economy. That gets a little more diverse, a little harder to measure. StatsCan doesn't measure induced impacts anymore because they can be a bit nebulous, but uh, BC Stats still measures it, and so if we wanted to cap capture all of the impacts, we looked at the induced as well using the BC model measures. Okay. Now, what did we, uh, okay, I just want to make sure we, we got this. Oh, what did You. I hope there's an awful lot of students in this, in, in this university who can keep the technology working. 
Okay, so we looked at our primary quantitative analysis was to look at the amount of money that VIU was putting into the local economy and beyond, and the categories were, first of all, the operating expenditures, the direct bills that VIU pays on an ongoing basis. Then major capital expenditures, and there are a lot that have happened, and there's a lot more in the works in the uh, long-term plan of the university. And then finally, students themselves who spend money and their visitors and so on who come to see them, especially the visitors of the uh, foreign students. So that was what we based our quantitative analysis on. Okay. Uh, another thing that is less... Okay, am I, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. That is less tangible, but we can get an estimate of the value, is how much more productive people are after they have had the benefits of a university education. And this shows up in their future earning streams as well as in less tangible measures that we couldn't put, put a handle on. So that is another measure of value that is produced by the university. The more productive and therefore richer people that result after their education. Okay, when we did all that, we got all the data we crunched all the numbers and put them through the input-output model to measure their effects. We gathered up the information from the interviews, and it was amazingly consistent, which is always refreshing. We didn't have too many contradictions to resolve. We put it all together. We put it into a report that is now available on the website. So. I think that is basically my presentation. I don't know if there'll be time for questions now or probably after you've heard the results of the report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosin. We very much appreciate uh, the hard work that you and all of your team, as well as the number of people involved in putting together all those elements of the report. Uh, that uh, produced what we have today. So thank you very much for that. Uh, before we move on to our next speaker, uh, we have another video testimonial that we want to show to you. At this time, we will hear from a member of VIU's own community, and that person is Stu Seaford. And as many of you know, he is the chair of the Heavy Equipment Operators Program. He's also been very involved with the British Columbia Government Employees Union, Local 702, here at VIU. And he's also a VIU alumnus, so he's got many hats he wears. So at this time, please welcome Stu Seaford. Hi, uh, my name's uh, Stu Seaford, and I'm the chair of the Heavy Equipment Operator Program here at uh, Vancouver Island University. 38 years I've been here, uh, which has seemed to have gone very, past very fast. I mean, it's just, I look back and I can't believe it, it's that long. Uh, I started here, uh, I, I graduated here in 1964, uh, uh, vocational school. I've seen uh, tremendous growth in, in, in what we do and expansion of what we do. And I think all those things have been positive uh, for not only Nanaimo, uh, for uh, the community that we, can, we serve. And we have students here from all over the world, all over the province, all over many provinces that come here to, to learn. And I think. Uh, we do a great job at that. I'm also president of the uh, Local 702 of the BC Government Employees Union. We have over 300 uh, members working for GEU in all different capacities in vocational, English second language, uh, uh, career and academic prep, and, uh, and uh, helping students get prepared to go out into the workforce. So uh, I think my members and, 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 and I believe that we have a very strong, again, economic impact as far as wages and benefits go uh, within the institution and the community as well as uh, the students that we train. I think the other one that people forget about is the students. The students that we've trained over the last, uh, this program started in 1957. The students that we've trained over those years uh, have gone on to be active members in the community, uh, uh, work, uh, made a living, etc. And, and contributed 
uh, to the economic uh, uh, growth of their communities. So uh, uh, I think we have a very positive uh, impact on, on the communities that we work on. In Nanaimo, we've um, uh, been part of building many parks uh, for parks and recreation. Uh, and same in Port Alberni, we did the uh, Summer Games expansion of Echo Parks in Port Alberni, we, we did that. So uh, over the years, I think we've had a very strong economic impact. as we speak. So thanks very much to Stu for that. Uh, those very good comments. So at this time, it's my pleasure now to welcome uh, the President and Vice Chancellor of our University, Dr. Ralph Nielsen. He'll come forward and elaborate on some of the findings that you will find in the VIU Impact Report. Dr. Nielsen. Well, thank you very much, Dan, and uh, I, I really do appreciate everybody coming today and uh, providing the support for this report. I want to thank uh, Roslyn particularly for all of your work and helping us uh, wander through this exercise. Uh, and I want to, I want to uh, also thank everyone in this community who has done so much to allow this institution to do what it does. Whether you're part of the faculty and staff, whether you're part of the student body, or whether you're part of the community here, it's incredible the, uh, the way this community works together to ensure that this institution can do what it does and, and do it well. And that's to provide a very, very successful um, group of students that come through an environment that helps them learn, help them understand, and help them grow. I'd like to start my conversation by uh, acknowledging we're on the traditional territories of the Sinemuk people and uh, appreciate their long-standing support for the institution in their territories. And I'm really happy to be here to share uh, the results of the VIU Economic Impact Analysis and Community Engagement Report. Uh, from my perspective, it's a, it's a very thorough analysis of the significant contribution VIU is making to the economic, to the social, the environmental, and the cultural prosperity in Vancouver Island, on Vancouver Island, the Sunshine Coast, and indeed uh, up and down BC Coast and BC as a whole. For example, one of the key findings in VIU's total economic impact in the region we serve is that we have an impact of $406 million. It's a huge amount of money. Other stats that are key to this report, VIU is delivering $204 million in value-added impacts that Rosalind talked about. We're producing over 3,090 jobs, and we're generating almost $38 million in tax revenue for the government. So that's, those are significant impacts for an institution here in Nanaimo. And it's important to recognize that VAU's impact is closely tied to the collaborative relationships that we have with our community partners and organizations such as school district, municipalities, First Nations, nonprofit organizations, for-profit organizations. Without these mutual relationships, VIU would not be able to have the significant positive impact as demonstrated in the report. And before I discuss this in more detail, I want to put this report in the broader context of Canada's post-secondary education sector. The Conference Board of Canada is conducting uh, a variety of different research studies examining the impact post-secondary institutions are having on communities locally, provincially, and nationally. One area is indirect expenditure. Post-secondary institutions employ a large number of people. They attract revenue, deliver teaching services, and support valuable research opportunities. There are a number of direct and indirect um, unique impacts that also have been identified. Post-secondary institutions create opportunities for community members and visitors to participate in education events. These institutions develop people by improving their knowledge and skills and preparing them for advanced employment. And then there's something called innovation capital. Paris talked earlier from Innovation Island. She spoke, of, uh, spoke about this when she mentioned how VIU's grads are using their skills and knowledge to start businesses and support the transition from resource-based economy to a knowledge-based economy. This initial research shows Canada's post-secondary institutions are having a significant impact in many areas, and indeed VIU is a part of that. The economic figures I've mentioned speak for themselves. And now I want to focus a bit on the stories behind the numbers. Here, it's a story of a regional university working closely with community partners to make a significant comp contribution to those four areas I mentioned earlier, economic, social, cultural, and environmental prosperity of our regions. Let's take one of the smaller numbers as an example. VIU produces 3,000 
and 90 jobs. A tangible economic impact of it is that those employees spend their salaries in local communities. Many of those jobs represent our dedicated staff and faculty who come to this region because of VAU and bring a world of expertise. They in turn share that expertise and knowledge with 17,000 students who come through our classroom doors every year. Many of those graduates put that expertise to work in our communities equipped with the skills and knowledge to open new businesses, start a career in healthcare, found a nonprofit, find innovative solutions to our issues and the communities face, and on and on and on. So VIU is helping to make a positive social and cultural impact. Many of the people who are interviewed, those 65 that Rosalind mentioned, for this report, spoke to the important role VIU plays in keeping young people in their community by allowing them to upskill, gain trade skills, earn bachelor's degree, master's degree, and all those designations without leaving home. We're a unique institution in the range of programs that we provide. Which brings me to another way in which VVIU is impacting our communities, by working to meet local and indeed regional needs. During the last few years, we've developed regional action plans for all our campuses to ensure that we're meeting the educational needs of our specific regions. As the report will indicate when you go through it, because of the smaller size of the communities where our campuses and centers are, that's Cowichan, Powell River, Parksville, Qualicum, those communities feel the impact of VIU even more. And sometimes we don't realize that here in Nanaimo. They particularly look to VIU to help them retain young people and attract new people to settle in their communities. The report shows we're doing a fairly good job of helping them do exactly that. I also look forward to finding more ways that we can build on this. For example, by working with the community partners to establish more niche programs. This collaborative approach is also evident in how VIU is working with our Aboriginal partners to develop programs that are economically and culturally relevant to First Nations communities. We're certainly leaders in the province in this. The Shellfish Aquaculture Technician Program was a good example as it prepares Aboriginal students for employment that connected them to their heritage and to the resources. We also have recently signed a tripartite MOU with the Cowichan Tribes and the school district in the Cowichan Valley, which has a focus on developing programs to support Aboriginal students. More than that, we're taking a lead within the community to build relationships between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal peoples. This was evident when we hosted the Douglas Treaties Conference with the Sinemuk right here on the Nanaimo campus. Organizing a community dialogue so we could come together to learn from each other and address many of the difficult issues that we face together. Universities are a place for difficult dialogues and VIU steps up and indeed provides that kind of space and takes that kind of responsibility in the community. Another area we're focused on is international education. I've mentioned the broader economic impact these students are having provincially. VIU is actively bringing an international perspective to the curriculum, preparing students to compete and be successful in the global marketplace. As part of our faculty, as part of that, our faculty are creating partnerships around the world, collaborating on research projects with a variety of international partners. International students, as the mayor mentioned, also enrich our culture and society, something I call kitchen table diplomacy. The Naimo families opening their homes to international students and learning about those students' country and their culture over breakfast, over lunch, over dinner. And we welcome, every, I, every year, I look forward to the International Education Week where we welcome all those community members, all of our international students, where the VIU's international students put their culture on displays through song, through dance, through food, through literature. That inter international reach is paired with a focus on our roots in the industry and training programs. We work closely with indus industry partners to run relevant trades programs that are going to produce skilled tradespeople who can meet industry's demands. We are also engaging with key community players, including school districts. One of our most successful programs has been the dual credit program where high school students can take trades programming, gaining employable skills before graduation from high school with their dogwood. We also have a nudes trade center in Cowichan, a direct result of a partnership between VIU, the school district in Duncan, and indeed, or the Cowichan Valley, and indeed the Cowichan tribes. Some of our trade students have put their skills to work in the past few years building new environments for current students. 
For example, the College and Campus, the Aboriginal Gathering Place, the Powell River Trade Center, and indeed the Deep Bay Marine Field Station, just to name a few. These capital projects created 532 jobs, and the total gross economic impact was $75.5 million. One of the reasons VIU is able to attract faculty and students to the region is because we can offer them the opportunity to study and learn in good facilities. These new buildings demonstrate VIU's commitment to supporting and contributing to the environmental prosperity of our regions. The college and campus, the Aboriginal Gathering Place, the Deep Bay buildings are all LEED certified, one of them at a platinum level. And as we move forward with other plans, we will continue to set an example for environmental stewardship. Our older facilities here on this campus need upgrading. And as a part of our transition to a university, VIU had to create a campus master plan with input from internal and external partners with a vision to enhancing learning spaces, improving campus life, and encouraging environmental stewardship. The total gross economic impact of these proposed infrastructure projects is a large number, 290 million, and could produce almost 2,000 jobs. We actually actively seek out communities' input on projects such as the Campus Master Plan. In turn, the community actively seeks out our knowledge and expertise. Our staff and faculty at this institution serve on boards and advisory boards of local organizations sharing their knowledge and expertise. And there's a wide, wide variety of them. Too long to list. A couple of examples are the Nanaimo Chamber of Commerce, Innovation Island, the Nanaimo Economic Development Corporation, the Port Theater, and the list goes on and on. And VIU is a large supporter of many local businesses and organizations. A couple of examples, we're the largest user of the public transit system in Nanaimo. And according to Mike Hooper, the CEO at the airport, we're the largest user of the Nanaimo airport. Number one, helping to, helping to support these key resources in our community and help them grow, help them expand. And there are many other examples of successful partnerships I could share. And now I want to talk about the future as I'm looking forward to furthering this collaborative process and in turn increasing the positive impact and contribution VIU is having in our regions. This is a, not the last you're going to hear about VIU's impact. To facilitate that, we're going to be launching a community campaign around the impact report. And what that means is that we want to have a conversation with all of you here and all the members in our community. We want to know how VIU has impacted people's lives. We want to know what people think we should do more of as we continue to evolve and grow and serve this community. And what are we not doing that people in this community think we should be doing? So we're going to be asking those questions in the community. And I truly believe all of us in this room have the same goal. We want to live in a region that is economically prosperous, culturally diverse, and able to come together to solve issues using innovative approaches, creative approaches, intelligent approaches. And as a first step in that process, I'd like to welcome everyone to VIU's open house on October 18th. All of, the, all of you in the community, we're having an open house on campus from, I believe, 1 to 6 on uh, Friday, October 18th, and we welcome you to come to campus and see all the exciting things that are going on here. It's a chance for you to find out what is happening in our campus and the varied opportunities for every member of the community to come and see their university. Thank you again for joining us today, and I look forward to receiving your feedback and answering any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ralph, and thank you very much again for everyone attending today. Before we open uh, the floor to your questions, and we would like to uh, hear your questions and comments about the, what you've seen in the report so far, or what you've heard so far, we have one more video, and that is from Mr. William Yoakum, or Bill Yoakum, as we usually call him. He is uh, Many Hats, Executive Director of the Quetlam Lalem Child and Family Services Agency. He is a counselor with the Sinemuk First Nation. He is a member of our Board of Governors, and he is a VIU alumnus, and Bill, of course, is here with us today. So let's hear from Bill. Thank you, Rutherford University has many benefits, but one benefit which I'm witnessing and I'm fortunate to witness on a, a basis over the, uh, over the years is the economic benefits that's happening to my people here in Sanamo First Nation 
but also to the um, city in Nanaimo at large. And we've had um, great success sending our students and our members to Vancouver Island University. We've been coming back home, working within the nation, if not with, within other First Nations, and then let alone also uh, general population at large to get in the skill sets and get on the work field. So it's been a really, uh, it's been really positive as we, um, as we all know the glaring stats of unemployment in First Nation communities. We're starting to see the results of our, our um, unemployment reduced and um, we're very thankful to, because of Vancouver Island University for giving us the skill sets. I'm a born and raised in Nanaimo, haven't gone far, and I was actually raised literally right in, by Vancouver Island University as I went to Fairview Elementary, then uh, John Barr's at NDSS, so all the um, schools within the vicinity and grew up in, the, in that neck of the woods, so I've been very fortunate over the years to see uh, the, the area transform into a thriving university district. Are we there yet? Absolutely not, but it's going the right way. And since, we, since Vancouver Island University became a university, you can just see the area growing, getting excited, and, and, and becoming this university district, which is great. And, and the spin-offs from that are just beneficial today, but more so the benefits in the future are just going to be outstanding for all here in this beautiful territory in St. Amel. Thank you. Heichka. Okay, at this time, uh, we're open to your questions uh, or comments. Uh, I'm going to invite uh, Dr. Coonan and Dr. Nilsson to come forward to the stage, and uh, I've got a microphone here for them, and uh, we've got some microphones right here at the front, so if you've got a question or if you've got uh, a comment or a query, uh, now is the time to ask it. You know, what contribution to make to the, you know, they make to the economy? Maybe you can talk a little bit uh, further elaborate in terms of how important that is to our local region. I'm going to use some, I'll use some generally rounded numbers here if I could. Um, you know, I, I look at the international students that this community has hosted and, uh, and welcomed. It's very, very, very significant. And you know, I talked about the kitchen table diplomacy, and I can't emphasize enough how important that is. But when you look at the economics, Vancouver Island University really got engaged in international education probably about uh, in the mid 90s when the, when the numbers started uh, really. Uh, coming in and the school placed a real emphasis on international students. And we've grown now where we've got about uh, 1,200 FTE, which uh, means full-time equivalent, probably about a 1,600 head count. And if you look at that FTE count, the spend of an international student in the community is approximately the same spend as a mill worker back in the days when the mills were, were going strong in Nanaimo. And, if, and you look at the, the transition in the economies here, the, the economy has changed dramatically. It used to be resource extraction economies, going back to the coal mining days, of course fishing, all the boats that used to be in the harbor, and of course all the mills and the, and the lumber. We're, we're driving the economy here. That's not the same anymore. We've seen quite a, quite a change, quite a transition, and uh, what happens now is that there's a variety of other knowledge-based economies. BIU is at the center of that. But one of the things that we do do by bringing in those students on a constant basis is that we do have a, a, a direct impact. And if you think about each of those individual students uh, uh, at the spend of a mill worker, all of that transition, the institution has really provide a replacement on a lot of that income stream in the community, which helps all of us and helps the whole community. And indeed, will continue as we continue to grow and, mo and move into the future. So that, I think that's probably one of the, the big ones, mm -hmm. Dan, in terms of the recognition of that. And you know, that's just the dollar spent. You start looking at rolling out at all the other potential opportunities, all the other relationships, all the other exchanges that, uh, that indeed develop from that. I think uh, we can start looking at uh, direct impacts, but uh, uh, many, many other impacts as well. Uh, then maybe the next question to Dr. Coonan in terms of, uh, you know, you've done a number of these sort of, sort of studies, whether it's in the post-secondary area or whether it's in public sector and so forth. But when you take a look at, um, you know, we look at a $406 million impact in the region that we serve or the province in general, what's your sense in terms of the kind of impact, how that would compare to an equivalent type of organization like a university or other universities in the province? Uh, what, in terms of scale and that impact, how would, you, how would you see that comparing? Well, it is a very large impact. Most businesses in BC and in Canada and so on are very, very small. So when you have an organization that has $400 million in expenditure, that has employment in the thousands, you are already having a very large impact without even counting secondary indirect effects 
and the fact that you're contributing to other organizations by producing an extremely valuable resource, namely highly trained human capital. So the impact is very, very large, and just to bring it right down to earth, I mentioned to the cab driver who drove me from the uh, seaplane terminal up to campus this morning, and he said, oh yeah, first of all, he comes to campus an awful lot and he told me he appreciated good directions because he's got lost on this campus an awful lot of times. And, and then he said the students, the campus, have a very, very direct effect on the economy from someone right down on the ground who sees it right in the business of his meter. That's great. Um, any questions from the audience? All right, I got, I got another one here for Dr. Nelson in terms of just, just keeping it going here, folks. Keep going. Uh, in in, when, we, when we look at, again, we've talked a lot about capital, about capital projects, the capital projects that we have done in the last couple of years and the ones that we have, have planned. Um, in terms of the long-term impact of having you know, good facilities and infrastructure, what, what, again, what, what sort of impact does that have both for the short-term economic benefit but also the longer-term benefit to the community? I think there's a, a, a variety of different ways that that impacts. We know the, uh, the direct relationship to the, to the spend in the community that comes from building a new facility, the direct relationship of the jobs, in, indeed of the individual that are working in that facility, and many times individuals that are trained uh, at our institution. Uh, and we also know that uh, we're looking at a virtual world now, and we're looking at many, many ways at how we can provide education without new facilities, but there are indeed particular demands. At this institution, we've identified particular capital projects that are absolutely key. We've got three priorities. We've got a list of about 20 that we need over time. We've got three top priorities, and one of them being a health and science building. You know, the, the identification of that health and science building goes directly to the history of this institution and the challenges that we have in terms of space that uh, we currently provide those programs in. We're currently under, under, under spaced by about 50% for our health programs, particularly the nursing programs and that's according to provincial formula. And the facilities that we have our science uh, uh, programs in, particularly our labs, are, are, are very, very old, inadequate, and don't have the kind of safety supports that are necessary. So in terms of our responsibility in providing quality learning environments, we, we have to recognize that we have to continue to keep up so that we can attract the students here and provide the kind of spaces that are necessary to meet the local demands and meet the, meet the local needs. Very good. Any fi final opportunity? Yep, come on forward, come on forward. Just come up to one of the mics here. Yep. Hi. I just like to qu quickly ask. Um, you did just get your name and Spencer where you from? Anderson. Hi, I'm from the Daily News. I just one question is this uh, impact is for the region and in, in general, but in terms of the city, um, perhaps Dr. Kuhn can answer this. Are we able to isolate what the impacts? would be solely for the city of Nanaimo. And just one follow-up to that would be, uh, could you elaborate again um, on why this study is being done at this precise time? Thank you. Well, most of the, imp we did not, because it's very hard to take an individual dollar and follow it and see whether it stays within city limits or not. We couldn't say this is the, the city itself, this is the greater, area around the city, this is the island, and so on. But we know that most of the people who are living here, working here, and spending here are, uh, are keeping a lot of the impact in the city. And if you look at the report, the difference, the leakages and so on, to make sure we don't double count, are the differences between the, the gross expenditures and the value added. So we have tried to clean that up that way. As to why this was done now, I'm going to pass the mic. Thanks for the question, Spencer. This was, this was done now because the, uh, the institution has uh, um, five years in as a new university. Uh, we're looking at the, the growth, the impact within the community. We're also wanting to make sure that we can provide our community with the understanding of the impact. Many times as this institution has grown, it's been here a long, long time, there's many, many people in the community that don't understand the impact of this institution within the community that it serves. And that's whether that's here or uh, that's in, in, the, in the regional area. And I think it's important as the university continues to evolve and grow and, and also continues to position itself as a leader in the area to be able to demonstrate and provide facts to people about the incredible importance of this community in the region and how important it is that the community continues to invest and partner 
and, and to collaborate to ensure that we're continuing to provide the kind of sor uh, support, the kind of students, the kind of uh, innovative minds, if you will, that, that we can in the region. And uh, the economic impact study allows us to get into conversations where we can base understandings on facts and then start thinking about where can we go from here and how can we work together. It also helps us in terms of attracting folks from a variety of other regions into this region. Uh, we're constantly looking at ourselves as a portal for this community. The international students would not be here if the university was not here. The faculty would not be here if the university was not here. And if you think about this institution as a portal to this community, it's very, very important to understand what that portal means, both in terms of economy, in terms of social impact, in terms of environmental impact, and indeed the innovative impact of the students that come through here are successful and want to stay here and live here. And as this community becomes more and more and more understood around the world, and I, understand, and I feel that BIU has a big part of that, when people start looking to settle in this community, and we've got the kind of facts that we have now to be able to explain about the economic impact of this institution, but also the size and strength of this institution through some kind of uh, quantifiable numbers. People are going to take, take much more attention, pay much more attention to that, understand that, and then make some decisions to maybe come and join us here in this beautiful part of the world. Constantly I'm getting calls from John Bertan to come and meet with people who are thinking about moving to this area. They want to come and understand this area. You know, the folks that are building the hotel that we've all heard about since Monday night's uh, council meeting. Those folks came and talked to us immediately they came to town. We get conversations with all kinds of people that come to this community because they don't know what this institution is. They don't know what the impact is. They don't know the size. They can go to the web and understand it. Now we've got some basic facts that can really explain the incredible strength and, in, and indeed the importance of its contribution and the importance of its, uh, it being a pillar of this community's evolution, this community's growth, and indeed that it's growing with the community. And as people come and join in this community, it's going to continue to grow, it's going to continue to respond, and it's going to continue to support the directions that we see. Good. Thanks. And another question here, Bruce. Yeah, Bruce Condi, the Director of International Marketing here at VIU. Uh, Ralph, you've already talked a little bit about this, but uh, this is great information uh, that hasn't existed before, and I'm wondering what plans we have for the use of it, um, both, I think, for the university, but the city, and even in the region. Is there specific plans on how this will be used? Well, we've mounted it on the web so that we can, information can be available and certainly we'll be doing some other breakdowns so that people have the kind of information that we want them to have and be, and be able to learn and understand. Uh, one of the things that uh, indeed this is very, very useful for too is that we make cases for the different kind of supports that we think the institution and the region should have. Uh, we can now have a, a much stronger basis of uh, not just conjecture about we think it's something like this, we've actually got the facts. And so it's going to be used in a variety of different ways to help leverage our strength as a reason why people should invest in this institution and invest in this community. So there's going to be a variety of different ways. And Dan, I think you've got some ideas on how it's going to be used. Yeah, well. I think so. I think you've commented on some of that. But I think over the next coming months and years, uh, we want to be able to have a conversation with the community, whether it's our internal community or the external community, about, about this and on the theme of the impact. Because it's really the first stage in terms of putting it together into a into a solid, credible report with numbers and figures and background. But the next question is a conversation, right? To so see, actually, let's, let's, let's put some more information on this in terms of what are the other things that we haven't considered here in terms of what the impact is going to be. So that, that's also really where we want to ask yourself and others in the room to figure, to, to, to come up with some suggestions as well about how we can, we can utilize this. The other thing, too, and putting my hat on with respect to advancement and our foundation, this is really important information when we go to talk to potential funders or donors or supporters, because that's a critical question they ask. What's your impact? What kind of impact do you have both ec economically, socially, and elsewhere? And I think this is really critical as we move forward with some of our fundraising priorities as well. But again, it is a two-way conversation too, so this is the beginning, but we definitely want to hear from you in terms of your ideas about uh, how we move forward with this. Maybe a secondary question, just uh, when Rosalind, you were doing the, your research and, and Ralph that, uh, uh, and, and the use of this, is what we're doing here um, in this report and research unique to VIU or are most of the universities across BC doing a similar thing? I just wanted to know how we're. 
Most of them are asking similar questions, and this gives you another reason to pat yourself on the back because the idea of moving from resources to knowledge economies, the idea of supporting Aboriginal communities and so on, these ideas are becoming more widespread uh, around the educational institutions in the province, and the fact that BIU has done well shows that you are, you are surviving and thriving in what is a competitive environment for the same resources, the same faculty, the same international students, and so on. So yes, all institutions, especially the newer, younger ones, are beginning to ask these kinds of questions. It's a final comment, I'll just say, I see my friend Sasha Angus over there from the uh, Nanaimo Economic Development Corporation. I want to thank him for uh, their support in uh, helping with today's event, but also we'll be talking to them about uh, sharing this information and also communicating that to uh, all the variety of different partners that they work with as well. So, all right, any final questions? Well, uh, Dr. Coonan and Dr. Nielsen will be available. I know we have a number of members of uh, the media here and thank you for coming. Uh, they'll be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews immediately following. Uh, and as we mentioned, this is only the beginning. Over the coming weeks and months, we've got uh, a number of activities planned, but we also welcome your ideas and suggestions. Uh, we've got some, uh, some uh, availability on our social media, Facebook and Twitter, to uh, comment or to provide feedback. We also, if you have an idea, you can send it to universityrelations at viu.ca, and we will, uh, we will take that and get back to you on it. Uh, before we conclude, I want to thank everybody who was involved with putting this report together. Of course, Rosalind Coonan and her team, uh, all the members of the VIU community who participated in interviews, who helped to review the report, uh, and in particular, of course, I be, would be remiss if I didn't thank all the hard work of my own department, University Relations, who have to put up with me daily, um, but more importantly, for their hard efforts in putting together today's event. So thank you again, everyone, for attending today.